Hello lovely people, I'm Stella from Stella's Yarn Universe. In this tutorial I show you how to crochet a little dog. Um, actually a lot went wrong <laughs> with this tutorial because I meant to crochet a Shih Tzu and I crocheted a little base, um, like a base to which I wanted to <laughs> attach the long fur. So I use uh, DK light versus weight cotton yarn like I usually do in combination with this lace yarn, which I wanted to use for the fur. So here you can see one example of my failed attempts. <laughs> so this was the little base puppy, even on its own. It's already a cute pattern if you want to use it to make a mini version of your furry friend. Um, you might find it helpful. You can make different ears. Um, if your fur baby has different ears, um, you can refer to my other tutorials. I'll link to some of them, like um, for small pointy ears, you can use my cat tutorial and um, just the ears, of course. Um, if you want larger ears, you can use my Jack Russell tutorial. I'll, I'll link to those two because they might be most useful. So this is... <laughs> This is the version like um, in which I try to cut the fur short because I've seen there are some with very long fur. I wanted to make um, the type of Shih Tzu with very long fur. And I attached all these um, threads to the body and it was just too much. I'm, I'm going to show you <laughs> a clip of that. Um, and yeah, then I tried to remove some of it. And it still didn't work, so um, I'm not ready to show you my other failed attempt. <laughs> I might in future um, be able to improve it and show you then. So I'm really sorry. I wish I could have done um, what I put in the poll, but um, yeah, after many <laughs> failed attempts, I'll leave it for now. But maybe it doesn't mean you know that I can't doesn't mean that you can't so you could use this little dog base and make your own Shih Tzu I'm sure especially those of you who um have Shih Tzus at home you know better how they look and um, you can still um go for it so what I ended up doing is I um used the base um pattern to make this fluffy little guy. I'm not sure what breed it is. <laughs> if it looks like a certain breed, let me know in the comments. I'd be curious to know. I'm, I'm not a, um, yeah, I'm not very knowledgeable when it comes to dog breeds. So I'd love to know. <laughs> and so for him, I used um, Drops Alpaca, held together with Drops Alpaca Boucle. I really enjoyed that um, they're really nice and soft and um, the stitches are actually quite easy to see. Um, I wouldn't do re-record re the tutorial with them because they're not that easy to see but um, easy enough so I wasn't um, struggling with that. I also started another attempt um with a different fluffy yarn i have here this one i'm not i don't remember the name but i'll blend it in if i find it out um so that's a very different effect and this one i used on its own and it was harder to see so if you want to experiment with yarn like this i recommend um just not taking the pattern so seriously if you skip stitches just continue going and just um, make them up somewhere else it won't be as noticeable and so this yarn is very forgiving um, but yeah also it might be easier to feel for the stitches if you can't see them um, yeah I used my um, fingers to feel for them uh, so that was helpful and it, it wasn't it was fun to use it wasn't too difficult um, also, a lighter color might be easier, but because it looks like this, it's you you can kind of see the stitches, um, and if not f feel them, like I said, you could also use something like this. I think that's Sirdar. Um, 
I'll, again, I'll write the name in the description if I find it out. And if that's too tricky, again, you can combine it with a thin cotton yarn and use it held together and that might help you see the stitches. What I will say with experimenting with this kind of, um, yeah, let's call them fluffy yarns, uh, with these, maybe this would have, could have worked for a Shih Tzu, but what I noticed with this is um, the, all the um, fluffy fibers, most of them, they land on the, on the wrong side of the work when crocheting in a round. So they're all on the, most of them are on the inside and not on the outside where we want them. So I find that they don't work very well with crocheting in a round. And uh, you could make a, make the coat like flat in it and working in rows and then attach it later. That would be another option for those of you who want to experiment with it. But yeah, even though it's a, <laughs> It's kind of a failed tutorial. I hope you will find it useful and you'll make you'll use it to just be creative with it and maybe recreate your little fur babies at home. Um, I'd love to see what you make with it. So if you do, um, yeah, tag me at Stellas Yarn Universe on Instagram if you like. And so without further ado, let's get started. So like I explained in the intro for this tutorial, I, um, well, in the video, you see me using this paint box yarns cotton decay. So this is a light worsted weight uh, cotton yarn in combination with a 2.5 millimeter hook. That's something in between a size B and C. Um, most of you will be fine with a size C, I would say, uh, but size B works as well. And for this fluffy guy, I actually used the Drops Alpaca held together with the Drops Alpaca boucle. And for both of these held together, I used the size E hook, so a 3.5 millimeter hook. And the other things we need are fiber fill, we need a yarn needle, we need embroidery, black embroidery thread for the nose and mouth, and a large eyed sewing needle for making the embroidery. Then I used five millimeter safety eyes and some pins, a stitch marker and scissors. So before we get into the actual tutorial, let me just show, what, show you what I did later on after recording the tutorial. So I used both these yarns and hold them together. In case you haven't done this before, I just want to show you a little bit of um, yeah, how I do that. So you, you just treat both strands as one. And then I use the size E hook, 3.5 millimeter, like I said. So it might be trickier to pull the magic ring tight. So it might be a good idea to start with a very small magic ring already. And then you just treat, like I said, the two strands as one and work this way. So in the video, whenever I um, say that I'm making a Shih Tzu, just know <laughs> that was the plan. Later the plan changed. So yeah, sorry about that. Please ignore me when I say that. And about attaching the um, fur with the lace yarn, I, I might refer to that as well in the video. If I do, then um, or sorry, if that's something you want to do, then um, you can actually see how I'm doing that in my um, Golden Retriever tutorial. So I'll link to all of the, the other dog tutorials in the description box below in case you want to mix and match your little dog with um, techniques that I used in those. So now might be a little bit trickier to close the magic ring and this is wool so it rips easily so 
shouldn't pull too hard. And then, yeah, this is not something I would record a tutorial with because on camera it's definitely tricky to see. But it's it's possible, like in 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 real life, I can see it. <laughs> I can see the stitches. So if you want to use this, I think it would be nice yarn to use, and they come in different colors, so. You can choose which one you want for your little dog. So that's how I use the yarns for the whole project. I use both yarns held together. I think you get how it works. So yeah, <laughs> let's continue with um, past Stella's tutorial. So let's get started with the legs. I'll be using this off-white cotton yarn in DK or light worsted weight for the whole project, except in the end when we attach these lacy fibers to create the fur. So I'm just using one color. This is just the base that won't really be visible in the end. So don't worry about changing colors. You can add the color changes in the end when attaching the fur. And so we start with a magic ring. Just use your preferred magic ring method. And then we make eight single crochet in the magic ring. And then I'll place my stitch marker in the first stitch before closing the magic ring. And now in round two, we only crochet in the back loops. So I'm going to remove that. Should be nice and easy to get in the back loop of the first stitch now. And here we make a single crochet and a single crochet in the back loop of the next stitch. And then we decrease and so we crochet the next two back loops together. So we go in the first back loop and to get in the next one I like to get my hook in between the front and back loop and then turn it like this to get under there. And then I pick up the yarn and pull it through the two back loops. <laughs> there we go, we should still have two loops on our hook. And then we pick up the yarn and pull it through these two loops. Then we have again two single crochet in the back loops only. I apologize, my neighbors are building a fence today. <laughs> but unfortunately, I don't have any other day to record this. So I hope you don't hear it too loudly. So here we have our two single crochet and now we have two stitches left. And again, we crochet the back loops together. So we go in the first back loop and again get our hook in between the front and back loop of the next stitch and turn it to get it on the hook and then pick up the yarn and pull it through the two back loops. 
And then we have two loops. We pick up the yarn and pull it through these two loops. So now our stitch count is down to six. And in the next two rounds, rounds three and four, we single crochet in all six stitches. Let's run three done. And another round of six single crochet. And that's round four done. And the little four leg is already complete now. So we finish with a slip stitch in the next stitch. And then we fasten off. So that's the first tiny leg done. You can repeat all of these steps to make the second four leg. Now to crochet the hind legs, we repeat the same steps, rounds one, two, four for the four legs, but we don't fasten off um, and we don't make a slip stitch yet. Instead, we add a fifth round to the hind legs. And so in round five, we single crochet two, and then we increase in the next stitch. And we repeat this once more to single crochet. And an increase. And then we make a slip stitch and fasten off. And we don't need a long yarn in here. This is long enough. And that's the hind leg done. So now you can repeat all of these steps to make a second hind leg. And then we can crochet the body. So we start with four chains. And so I'm making a little loop on my hook and then chain four. Now I make a single crochet in the second chain here. And a single crochet in the next chain. And in the last chain, I'm making four single crochet. So I'm making two from this side. And then I turn this little piece and make two more in the same chain, but from the other side. And then just hold this yarn and you're out of the way a bit. So now we have four single crochet in the last chain. And now I crochet in the other side of the next chain. So exactly the opposite of the other single crochet, I'll make another one. So now you can see they're opposite each other. 
opposite of each other and then in the other side of the next chain I'll make three single crochet so together with the first one that we made we also have four on this side now so we have a total of 10 stitches in the round and now we crochet on the legs and so we start with one of the hind legs and I didn't I didn't really um, uh, make any embroidery or stitches here to um, make the paw appear more paw like because all of the fluffy fur will cover that anyway so I'm leaving it like that but still I feel like the leg is pointing in this direction um, so I'm going to join the leg at the inner side here so here where we finished the last round I'll go we finished with them um, in with an increase and I joined the hind leg in the first single crochet of this increase so this might not work for all of you depending on your tension when you crochet but um, if you're unsure where to start you can start trying this so now I crochet all around the leg in all eight stitches The slip stitch. Once I've crocheted in that, I pull it tight at the yarn end. And uh, that's eight. So now I crochet all around the hind leg. Next, I'm making three single crochet in the belly. So in these three stitches, one, two, three. One, two, and three. So now we can see if the Hind leg is pointing forward. I mean, it's not really, it doesn't really show the way I left the legs. So don't worry too much about it. And especially if you're making a long, uh, long haired shichu, <laughs> if that's the way to describe them, then don't worry too much about it. So that's a, the good thing about all that fur. It's going to cover. Um, little imperfections like that. So now we take the first foreleg. This one I'm joining again at the back. So I'm starting here with the slip stitch that we made. And then I single crochet in all six stitches of the foreleg. I'm just putting that yarn in tight after crocheting in the slip stitch. That's it. And then I'm going to make two single crochet in the body. So one, two. And that's it. Now we attach the next four leg. So for this one, I'm starting with the 
first stitch of the round, so the one to the left of the slip stitch. And then I make six single crochet all around. And that's it. Then I pull that yarn in tight. And then we have a three single crochet in the body. So be careful here. We already crocheted in this one. So this is the next one, two, three. And then there's only one leg to go. So here, I start joining this leg, not this time, not at the last increase here, but the one on the other side. So this one here, and I'm going to insert my hook in the first single crochet of this increase. So right here. And then I'm going to make eight single crochet all around the leg. And that's eight. And then I'm going to single crochet in the remaining two stitches of the round. One and two. And here I place my stitch marker. In the next round, we start with a decrease. So at this step with each of my projects, I sometimes skip the first stitch accidentally. So the first stitch is this one here, the one on the leg. So with, this is a regular decrease. So we go in the front loop of the next stitch and the front loop of the next one, pick up the yarn, pull it through both front loops and pick it up and pull it through the two remaining loops. Then we make five single crochet. And another decrease. Then one single crochet. And another decrease. Then for single crochet and here we have two decreases in a row. one and two 
and again four single crochet and a decrease one single crochet decrease five single crochet decrease and two single crochet so now our stitch count is down to 30 and in the next round we single crochet one in each of these 30 stitches So, oh, actually, I'll secure my stitch now because I want to hide these yarn ends now. I'm going to hide them inside the legs, so I kind of use them as filler for the legs. I love these little pliers for this. If you have something like that, it's really useful. If not, you can try to use your hook to fill the legs with the yarn ends. And if they're too long, just cut off the excess or just leave it and then it will be, it will serve as filling for the body.
Yeah, I'm not forcing it if it's too long. Just leave it. Don't want to overfill the legs. So in the next round, we will make an opening for the neck. And so we'll skip six stitches here in the front, the center front of the body. And so we want to make sure that they are the six stitches in the center front. So now we can find the center. I would say that's here in between these two stitches, more or less. So I'm counting three to the right one two three so this is the first stitch i want to skip and now i'm counting how many i need to crochet to get there i already know for me that's 11 but it might be different for you so i just wanted to show you how to determine that one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven that's right so don't worry if that's a different number for you. Um, it's because, again, because you might have different tension when we crochet or you might use a very different yarn that gives you a different result. So I'm making 11 single crochet here. You can do the same or make as many as needed to get to that place. That's 11, and again, double checking, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this will be the first stitch that I crochet in again. And it seems like these are the six stitches that are most in the center front. So once you double check that, you can make four chains, and then skip the six stitches. And single crochet in the seventh. So now you're just single crochet in all remaining stitches. So for me, that's 13, including this one here. And that's it. So now we have this opening for the neck. You can again double check to make sure that it's in the center front. So now our stitch count is 28. And in the next round, we'll decrease quite a bit. So we start with one single crochet. And that then we make a decrease, then two single crochet, decrease, two single crochet, decrease. 
Now, if you have fewer than 11 stitches here on this side, you can start with the decrease. So you can count back. You finish before this um, chain of four, you may have a decrease, then two single crochet, decrease, two single crochet, decrease, and then I, because I had 11 stitches, I had one single crochet here. If you have 12 stitches on this side, you can start with two single crochet. If you have um, 10, then you would start with the decrease. Um, if you know what I mean, just to avoid having to decrease in these chains here. Although that's also possible, but it's a bit complicated. So next we have one single crochet in each of these chains. And I just pick up the back loop. We want to leave the front loops open so that we can use them to crochet the neck later on. Two, three, four. And then we have a decrease. Two single crochet, decrease, two single crochet, decrease, one single crochet. And we finish with a decrease. So now our stitch count is down to 21. In the next round, we start with a decrease. And then we single crochet one. And we repeat this seven times in total, six more times. Decrease. Single crochet one. Decrease. Single crochet one. So now our stitch count is down to 14 and in the last round of the back here we make seven decreases in a row. You can fill the body first if that's more comfortable for you, if it's easier. Um, I will fill it after completing the last round, I'll fill it through the neck opening.
and that's it so now i'll fasten off and before closing the round i'm going to fill the body now through the neck opening with little portions of fiber fill i'm going to use my little pliers again The body is nicely filled now, and so I'm going to close the round. So for that, I need my yarn needle. And now I'll go through the front loops of all seven stitches. And I don't close, I don't pull the yarn too tight just yet. Do that in the end. Now, if you're using wool or acrylic, acrylic yarn um, or a blend, um, be careful not to pull too tightly because it might rip. I'm using cotton yarn, so it's quite robust. I can, I can pull quite tightly. And then we go in the center of the last round through and just go through to the belly here to weave in the yarn end. And pull that nice and tight again. So that's closed, and then we'll even the yarn end. And cut it short. So, legs and body are done. So now we can crochet the little neck. And so, using the same yarn again. And so I'm starting here. In this stitch, next to the first skipped stitch. So this is the first skipped stitch. And then the one to the right, the one that's already crocheted in, that's where I join the yarn. So I go through that one and pull the yarn through. And then I'll just hold this yarn end in place. And then I'll start by making one single crochet in each of the six skipped stitches. And now you can see here again, the first stitch um, on the left of the six skipped stitches. So I'll make one single crochet in there. So this one that already has a single crochet done in it, make another single crochet in there. Now we turn it around. Now I'll crochet in the other side of these four chains that we made here. So it's one, two, three, four. This is the first one. One, two, three, Four. And then the last stitch goes in this one here where we first joined the yarn. And 
and that's it so now our round has 12 stitches and in the next round we'll single crochet one in each of them so there we go And that's 12. So now, oh, now we make a slip stitch in the next stitch. And then we leave a long yarn and for sewing, this one we will use to sew the head on. So it needs to be quite long, at least. 25 centimeter or um, 10 inches. So now we can hide this other yarn end inside the neck. And I'm also going to fill the neck now. You can do that later if you prefer. Just adding a little bit of fiber fill there. And that's it. So now we can set the little body aside and crochet the head. So for the head, I'm using the same yarn and I start with a magic ring. There we go. In round one, we make six single crochet in the magic ring. I'm using my stitch marker again to keep the first stitch nice and loose before closing the round, closing the magic ring. And in the next round, we start with an increase. And then we make a single crochet in the next stitch. And we repeat this two more times. One increase. And one single crochet. And again, one increase. And one single crochet. So now we have nine stitches in the round. In the next round, we start with two single crochet. And then we have five increases in a row.
and then we single crochet in the remaining two stitches. So now we have a stitch count of 14. In the next round we start with five single crochet. And then we have four increases in a row. And then we finished the round with five single crochet. So now we have a stitch count of 18 and in the next two rounds we'll single crochet one in each of these 18 stitches. So you can pause the video here and hit play once you crochet the two rounds of 18 single crochet. That's the two rounds of 18 single crochet done. Now I'll secure the last stitch because now is a good time to embroider the nose and mouth and insert the safety eyes. So I'm using black embroidery thread, about 30 centimeters, um, 12 inches. and a large-eyed sewing needle. When it comes to embroidery, it's uh, usually I, I recommend stitching through the fibers instead of going through in between stitches to have more control over where the stitch goes. That's why it's useful to have a pointy needle it's not too thick also and so I'm gonna go through from the inside of the head somewhere close to the center of the magic ring so like I said I want to catch some of the, the fibers so I don't just go through the center I go a tiny bit higher to make sure I have control over where the stitch goes and then I just pull the thread through, just leaving the end long enough so I can tie it um, together with the other end in, when I'm done with my embroidery. So now I'm making a triangle shape. And so um, you can just see where it looks like the bottom side of the face is naturally. I think it, I would say it's here. So I'm going to embroider the triangle like this. So now I go through somewhere in between round one and two, but again, catching the fibers with my stitch and go through to the other side. Again, in between rounds one and two. And then I go through the center point again. Now I want to fill this triangle. So I'm going to fill this bit here. So to do that, I make a stitch next to that one. Again, catching the fibers of the yarn. And I go through the center point again and again. 
now it may be useful to actually go through the center of the magic ring to make it easier to get the needle through. We have a quite round now nose, so it's not really a triangle shape, but that's um, that's intended. <laughs> So with my last stitch, I go again through through to this corner here. Now I want to cover these um, stitches with a horizontal stitch. So now I'm going here into the other upper corner, back to here to the center. And that's the nose done. Now I'm making a vertical stitch downward. And then I go straight into embroidering the mouth. So I make the mouth quite small. I just make a horizontal stitch to one side. It's not wider than the nose. And then I go through this new center point here below the nose, where I just went through to make an hopefully equally long horizontal stitch on the other side for the mouth. And then I go through the center spot here. I'm careful not to poke myself. <laughs> go through the, to the inside of the head. And that's it, that's looking good. So now we can tie these ends together. And that's the nose and mouth done. Now we can insert the safety eyes. And so I'm attaching the safety eyes in between rounds one, two, three, four, four and five. So I'm using my pliers again. Um, sometimes um, I also use my scissors carefully or my hook to just make some space in between the stitches before inserting the eyes. Also, you can already see the placement and sometimes you can already tell if it's the right placement. So on the other side, maybe here, let's see. It looks too far down. I think that's better. So let's try that. And 
Let's count before so I can tell you how many stitches there are in between the eyes. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's looking good, I think. So once you're happy with the placement, you can secure the safety eyes. Now we can continue crocheting the head. And so in the next round, we start with four single crochet. And then we make a decrease. And we repeat this two more times for single crochet. And a decrease and once more. So now it's a good time to fill the head with fiber fill. First I'm hiding all these yarn and thread ends inside. And then with the fiber fill, we want to make sure that it goes everywhere in between and around the backs of the safety eyes. So using very small portions helps with that. That's it for now. We can still add a little more after the next round. So in the next round, we start with a single crochet. And then we make an in a decrease and we repeat this four more times. Single crochet. and a decrease. So now we're down to a stitch count of 10. 
adding a little bit more fiber fill. And then we finish with five decreases. So now we can pass them off. And close the round. So here we need our yarn needle again. And again, I go through the front loops of all five stitches. And then pull tight, unless you're using something else but cotton. <laughs> and then we go through the center of the last round here. And that's the head done, just needs a pair of ears now. The ears are crocheted in rows. And so I'll make a little loop on my hook and then start with three chains. In row one, we make two single crochets starting in the second chain here. Then we chain one and turn. Then we skip the first stitch and single crochet, single crochet in the second one here. Chain and turn and single crochet in this new stitch. And that's it already. Here we're leaving a long enough yarn in for sewing. And now I'm going to weave this yarn end at the tip of the ear through to the base on the other at the other base corner here. So I'll weave it through to the side first. And then down to this corner and it's not a pretty ear but I leave it this basic because we will later attach some fur to it so it's not gonna stay like this and now the ear is ready to be sewn on so just make another one like just like this one and Next we have the tail.
the tail is made in one single row. So we make a loop again and seven chains. And then we single crochet, we make six single crochet starting in the second chain. And that's it, then we fasten off, leaving a long enough yarn in for sewing. And that's the tail done. I'm going to start with the ears. So I'll sew them on the head. And so I'm leaving two rounds space between the ears and eyes. I'll just put in the pin here and it's the base of the ears is also in alignment with the eyes. So I'm starting with one side. With the yarn needle. And I'll just go through the head. And then through the base of the ear. And again through the head. And back through the base of the ear. And once more through the head. And now here through the base of the ear at the corner. And then I'll weave this yarn end in. Somewhere here on the bottom side. And then I'll also weave the other yarn end in. And this will further help attach the ear. That's one ear done. So now we can repeat all these steps with the other ear. So just making sure that its placement is symmetrical. Again, two round space between the eye and ear. And then the base of the ear aligns with the eye. So now we can attach the head to the body and so if you haven't filled the neck yet you can do so now and then 
you can pin the head on. Just have a quick check to make sure that it's in the right position, but that's looking good. So I'm starting with a stitch close to the neck. And I stitch through the head. Trying to make the stitches as small as possible and as close to the neck as possible. Then with the next stitch, I go through the next single crochet stitch here off the neck. And then again through the head. And this way I just alternate. So now I'm going through the neck again, through the next single crochet stitch. And next again through the head. So you can do another round if you want to attach the head more firmly. I'll leave it at this one round. And now I'll just weave in the yarn end. And 
and just use it to close this gap here. Although we'll attach lots of yarn for the fur anyway. So now the head is attached and so next comes the tail. So the tail just goes centered on the back obviously. So the right side is um, facing the front and the wrong side of the stitches is facing the back um, just because it tends to curl forward um, because we'll add lacy yarn to the tail as well so we won't see the stitches but the shape of the tail um, I think looks cute if it tilts forward so here we just make Small stitch through the body and back through the base of the tail. And through the body and the base of the tail and then can weave in this yarn end. And then we also weave in this other yarn in here. And that's the tail attached as well. So that's the base for our little dog done. I think it already looks cute as it is. <laughs> so you might want to make one just like that. So this is the little guy I ended up making <laughs> with this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it even though it didn't go to plan. I hope you found it useful to make your little fairy baby or just be creative with it. Thank you very much for crocheting along with me. Uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please give this video a like for me and subscribe if you haven't already. And turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my future crochet tutorials. And if you would like the written pattern, um, for this guy you can find it on patreon the link is in the description box below once again thank you very much for being here with me bye see you next time